Good morning and welcome to the final vlog from this epic Europe trip that I've done over the past two weeks through Belgium, France and Germany. It's been absolutely fantastic and if you want to see all of the different vlogs that I've filmed throughout this trip then check out the dedicated playlist here on Theme Park Worldwide. But yes, the final park of the trip here in France and this is sort of halfway between where I was yesterday in Germany and back to uh, the ferry back to the UK. And uh, yeah, here I am at Nigloland. The park opened back in 1987 and I'm looking forward to riding the fantastic variety of attractions that are on offer at this park including Alpina Blitz uh, which is a Mac Mega Coaster that opened in 2014. Uh, it looks like a really good fun ride and I'm looking forward to experiencing it. In terms of the park and the other rides here don't really know much about it. Uh, in terms of coasters I know they've got I think four coasters built by Mac Rides and uh, yeah there's one like an indoor coaster gives like the old Eurosat sort of vibes to it and uh, yeah there's a powered coaster here water rides so I know they've got like a few boat rides and things so yeah I'm really looking forward to it in terms of the setup here uh, it's actually a much bigger uh, park entrance than what I was expecting uh, for some reason I just thought it was going to be quite small uh, however the car parts quite far away in that direction and then you walk down next to the park um, like round the perimeter fence uh, very nice with all permanent lighting and everything along uh, they've got a small hotel here as well pirate themed and um, so yeah I'm really looking forward to it uh, I don't quite know what to expect in terms of the different themed areas here uh, obviously they've got like a Swiss themed area I think there's a Canadian area as well uh, but yeah I don't know loads about it but that's what's gonna make it fun like these this has been the beauty of this trip visiting loads of new parks uh, that I've never been to before and of course returning to a few of my favorites as well so uh, anyway park hours today I think the 10.30 until 5.30 today. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to wait for it to open. We'll head inside and we'll get this vlog on the road. Welcome to the vlog here from Negloland. Right then, so I'm inside the park and I must say, first impressions, this place is very pretty. Some nice landscaping and theming around. And this is the ride that has really made me want to come and visit this park today and include it in this road trip. And here it is, it's the park's Matt Mega Coaster that opened in 2014 called Alpina Blitz. This looks incredible. I really like the idea uh, of the fact you've got the drop and then straight into that corner. I've heard that it's very intense and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to experiencing this one. It's got a nice blue track to it and I believe it's got two trains. It's got a blue train and a red train. Wow. With it being so quiet here today, I'd imagine it's only going to be running the one train. But yeah, so it's a Matt Mega Coaster, and with this, it features no inversions, it's all about the airtime. And round it comes. Looks quite fast, actually. And then into some airtime hills there at the end of the ride. But yeah, it looks very nicely themed as well. There's the park's gyro drop tower over there. We'll go on that at some point later on once I've done the coasters and get some views. I believe that's the indoor roller coaster there. That's another one by Mac. So they've got a Mac Wild Mouse, uh, they've got a powered coaster, they've got the indoor coaster, and then they've got the mega coaster here. And then there's a couple of other uh, coasters here as well, I believe. But yeah, they love their Mac rides here, and I love my Mac rides. And of course, that's one of the many reasons why I wanted to come and visit this park. And here it is, Alpina Blitz. I can hear some really nice music playing up here, so. I think it's gonna have quite a catchy soundtrack. But yeah, it's a very picturesque coaster. And I must say, it looks very nice landscapes all around here. I think this is the entrance, or I'm assuming so. There we are, 1.3 meters. Alpina Blitz. That airtime hill up there looks great. Here we go. Yeah, I like all the planting what there is around here. Not much in terms of in the middle of the ride area over there, but it's nice all around this section. I can, can you imagine this if they put like all mountains and rocks all around it? It'd look even better, wouldn't it? Uh, but I do like the blue track. Probably prefer this color blue uh, than blue fire because that's got a lighter uh, color on it, hasn't it? And here we go, entering the station. I'll get on the front row for my first ride. Looks very quiet. Oh yeah, maybe two trains worth. So here we go, join me on Alpina Blitz here at Nigloland. Let's go.
okay then. So an awesome front row ride there on Alpina Blitz. I've gone straight to the back. Uh, I'm not directly on the back row. I've gone on the row just in front of it. Uh, just so I've not got a seat directly in front of me. Just so we get a bit better view here for the POV. Uh, but yeah, I'll share my full, thought, full thoughts in just a moment when we come off. But wow, here we go, back row. Oh, air time. Oh, it's so intense. Hey. <laughs> Bit of a rattle at the back. Oh. Hey, all that airtime's good. And again, hey, one more. Woo! Oh, wow, that was brilliant. Really, really nice ride. Whew, is it a front row ride or a back row? Oh, I think some more rides are needed to find out. Whew. So as this beautiful coaster had a walk on queue, I couldn't resist doing a few re-rides. So I've uh, had five rides on Alpina Blitz this morning. Very, very good, strong coaster. Uh, it's very intense as well. For a ride that's only 108 foot tall, and the fact that it only reached a top speed of 50 miles an hour, uh, like, I thought it was very intense. Mag rides coasters aren't known for their intensity. Uh, however, with this, it's definitely the most forceful uh, Mac rides coaster uh, I've ever been on. Like, it's mainly because as soon as you get to the bottom of that first drop, uh, you're straight into that corner. And on the front row on the right hand seat, uh, it's like a near grey out moment, which is unheard of on a Mac coaster. Uh, the ride's very, very smooth. It does have a bit of a, an icon rattle to it, as I would call it, um, which some of these Mac coasters do seem to have, um, where the, you can just feel a little bit of a rattle. It doesn't sort of, it's not rough, I wouldn't say, uh, but it just, it's more annoying, the sound of it, to be honest. Uh, but let's just talk about the highlight of that ride. Uh, along with the bottom of the first drop, it's the airtime hills. Then three at the end on the back of the train, absolutely phenomenal brilliant airtime of course with it being a mat rides coaster and uh, just having that nice lap bar restraint uh, it means that you get some brilliant pops of airtime some great ejector uh, in places as well uh, but yeah overall the coaster is pretty much what i was expecting it's not like over delivered and it's not under delivered it's exactly what i was expecting uh, it's a brilliant ride as expected running one train because it's so quiet uh, but what a, a nice addition i think they pay like eight million euros for it I'll uh, find out later on because I'm actually meeting the uh, uh, the owner of the park later on, which is going to be interesting. I'm uh, looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the, the ride, very impressed with that. I think it looks really pretty as well all around here. It'd be nice maybe with a couple of tunnels or something on it. Uh, with it all being uh, about going through the mountains and things, it'd be quite nice to have an actual mountain like in, in one part of the ride. Not Nothing massive, but like a 20, 30 foot tall interactive feature or something what it goes through a bit like wicker man style but a mountain i think it'd be really nice and it blasts you with like a snow machine or something uh, but honestly the ride itself really good very intense I, I wasn't expecting uh the bottom of the first drop to be as intense as it was um so yeah it was very very good and yeah, that much so i've had quite a few rides on it already which is rare for me because normally i'd be like one ride and then i'll go and do all the coasters but with that i definitely wanted to do a few rides on it uh but yeah here it is let's just have a look at that drop again from around here You'll see exactly what I mean in terms of the intensity. And like I say, like there's not many rides out there that make me nearly gray out. But with this, it does. And it's crazy, isn't it? Because I'd class this as a very family ride from looking at it off ride. But it's very thrilling. Do you think you've got that huge drop just there? And then you're straight into that corner. It's not up into an airtime hill or uh, like an overbank like Blue Fire. It goes straight into that on the, uh, on, you know, it banks you to the right hand side. And you imagine it in that right hand seat. It's, uh, it's brilliant. Really, really good coaster. Certainly not disappointed. Um, but yeah, I'm very impressed with it. I'm glad to get on it. It's not my favorite uh, mega coaster that I've done. Um, I do prefer Blue Fire. Helix, Icon, uh, however, I still think this is a, a fantastic ride and it's great for this park. I think they pay like 8 million euros, like I say, so which isn't that much at all, really, for what you've got here and the quality of a, a Mac ride. But anyway, up next then, gonna try this coaster over here, which is in that big building. It's another Mac coaster. It's nice to be saying that. And yeah, I've been told that it's a little bit like a mini Eurosat from Europa Park. So yeah, let's go and have a look and uh, see what happens on this one. Alpina Blitz though, what a beauty. I'll be back for some more re-rise later. Really like 
like this American section of the park. You've got some very good theming here. And here we go, this is the entrance to it. Special experience, I think it translates to. Oh, where are we going? Down this way, through the door. So yeah, it's a space-themed indoor coaster built by Mac. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a Eurosat. Looking forward to this. Opened 19 years ago in year 2000. So I don't know what to expect. I've never seen a POV. I don't know if we've got any like line effects and I don't know, props. Anything's possible, but the building's quite big for it, isn't it? Massive show building. So here we go. Let's see if it actually is a special experience. <laughs> there we go. Reminds me of Space Mountain. Oh, here it is. the ambience in this station. It reminds me of old Eurosat and Space Mountain mixed together. Look at the trains. Oh yes. Right, let's go on. So we're in the pitch black, going up a spiral lift hill. Much like Eurosat. Here we go. Whoa, strobe light. It's an intense ride. I know you can probably see nothing. I'm happy to confirm that that was quite a special experience. Brilliant indoor roller coaster, and again, very intense. I mean, I didn't know what to expect from that. Uh, definitely gave me the old Eurosat vibes. I uh, hardly put any footage in there because nothing showed up on the GoPro uh, because it was mostly UV style painted theming in there. Um, a few like planets and things around. There was actually quite a lot to look at, but it just doesn't show up on the GoPro. Uh, in terms of the intensity of the ride, uh, much like Alpina Blitz, it had some corners that you went into after the drops that made it very intense, uh, but it was really smooth. You know me, I love indoor roller coasters. Uh, for me, I'm a massive fan of dark rides and coasters. So when parts combine the two together with an indoor coaster, uh, I'm in my elements. But yeah, that was really good. Nice soundtrack to it as well. Uh, the same sort of uh, train design as the old Eurosat. And it reminded me of that a lot, especially having like a dance track uh, playing in there and at the end of the ride. Uh, some good like near misses as well. And uh, you can see a little bit in there, um, but not loads as well, you know. So there was that, that strobe light that sort of uh, blinded you at the start of the ride and then you were going around them first few drops and things and you couldn't see anything so yeah it was really good I enjoyed that a lot uh, two coasters down uh, and let's go over to the next one this is a Mack Rides uh, Wild Mouse so let's go and check it out here it is then my third roller coaster to ride here at Neglo Land and unfortunately it's closed at the moment it was open when I walked past it earlier so it must have just gone down but hopefully I'm gonna get on it later I'll tell you the name of it though because it's quite a funny name. I've got to be uh, a bit careful how I say this one. It's a family channel. Uh, it's called the Schlitt Express. There you go. Don't worry, I did say Schlitt. And <laughs> I may as well go on the next credit then whilst I'm here and do this one. Hopefully that'll be open later, like I say. No need to panic at the moment. I'm sure I'll get the cred later on. Uh, we have got this wacky worm, big apple coaster here. Got a nice river running through the park. And this bridge, 
uh, this is going to be my first and last ride on this um, because yeah it's going to be removed for next year as they're going to make way for a brand new family coaster uh, that's going to be located on this site just here you can see they've already started doing a bit of uh, groundwork for it and there you go it says on here 2020 so yeah a new family coaster coming in is that the name maybe there what the teasing there you go of course stay tuned to the park's official facebook twitter and instagram uh, to be kept up to date on that one i'm sure it's a part that i'll come to in the future and have a ride on that but here we go yeah we're well go and do this it's open anyway cred to cred and then head over and do the matt rides power coaster if you haven't guessed already this one isn't built by matt <laughs> Off we go then, you know what they say, a cred to cred. That's it, my last wacky worm of the trip. I've been on a few of these. Oh, I do like just seeing Alpina Blitz peek through the trees over there. Much cooler today as well. It's about 23 degrees Celsius, so just nice today. After the hot weather I've had over the few days, especially down at Europa Park. Well, all the parts that I've done over the past few days, it's been very warm. What awesome weather though it's been for this whole trip, really. It's not chucked it down at any of the parks. This is where it chucks it down this afternoon or something. Hey! I like how with this one, it doesn't slow it down much when it goes back through the station. Keeps quite a bit of speed, actually. Some of them, we tend to slow it down a bit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they replace this with. Might be able to find out some information later. Oh my god, we're going again. Oh, hey. I know I always say this, but I don't think you need to see it for a third time. <laughs> so I'll see when we come up. Three lap special there on the Wacky Worm. And I made my way back down towards where I walked in actually into the park. It's coming to Village Canadian. I like the look of this area around here. And I've just seen, I'm pretty sure they've got like a, a Mississippi showboat running around uh, on the lake, which looks good. Again, I didn't know that was here. I had that surprise when I went to uh, Park St. Paul a couple of weeks ago now, back near the start of the trip. Yeah, let's uh, head down this way. It is very, very quiet today, but it's a weekday. Um, I think when the holidays kick in, much like anywhere, it's going to get very busy. So it's good for getting on some different rides. Got a little, uh, I always call them a Los Patrillos style ride, only because that's like one of the first ones I went on at Port Aventura as a kid. <laughs> yeah, like the little horse ride that you sit on. And there we go, we've got a pirate ship down here. Oh, we've got a good bit of cheering going on on there. Hey, I like that. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Galleon Pirates. Yes, let's head down this way. I think down here we've got that other coaster, so obviously that's the only one I can get for now. The Matt Rides Powered Coaster. That'll leave me with the one more uh, other Mac Wild Mouse that I need to get on later on hopefully it'll reopen hope so yeah it's actually quite a big park it's much bigger here than what i was expecting actually i for some reason i just had it in my head that it was going to be quite a small park but it's not like it covers quite a lot of space just walk past some of the other family attractions they've got as well and um, they've got like a go-karts style ride and um, vintage cars down there there's the train obviously you can see the track just here it's very very picturesque all in the trees and yeah welcome to canada so we're looking for a power coaster and i think it interacts with a, a log flume as well so whilst i'm down here i may as well do that mm -hmm. 
It's a very nice section of the park this, with all the water around. You've got the log flume over there. Uh, that isn't open at the moment. However, I think I've worked out why that wild mouse coaster uh, is shut. It seems to me uh, like there's not a staggered opening situation, but things open for a bit, and then they close, and then they open again. So I assume it's just because it's a quiet day to cover breaks, I'd imagine. So not a big fan of that. Um, yeah, I've just seen for this, you see, because this shuts at one o'clock till two. The log flume um, shuts from 12 till one. Yeah, I assume it's just because it's off peak, but still, I'm not a huge fan of that. I understand the operational costs and things, but yeah, not a big fan. It just means that when you're walking round, uh, obviously you walk to a closed attraction don't you sometimes and obviously that's what happened to me with that wild mouse coaster I'm assuming anyway I didn't notice a sign but I wasn't looking for them so I'm not too sure this is quite nicely themed isn't it opened in 1992 Matt Grimes power coaster very nice off we go then eerily quiet in the station coming down with just a bit of music wasn't it oh he checks the uh, checks the lap bars as it goes out hey Here we go. Nice bit of tunnel there. Good layout on this actually. Block flume looks quite good down there from the layout. The trough's empty at the moment though. Mine train at Alton Towers on a good day. When it's got a short queue and the operator's Mr. Lee Wood. There we go, slowing down for the return. That was a nice power coaster, that. Yeah, I can't see much action down this log flume. It's supposed to be open again in five minutes. That's if I read the sign right. I think I did. Oh, oh, there we go. As soon as I say it, water is now flowing down. There we go. Just been switched back on. He's had his lunch break. <laughs> Enjoyed that. That was a really good power coaster that really like rides that interact with others and obviously with that it goes over the log flume i know it wasn't going round whilst i was on it however uh, it's open now so i'm going to head on to it uh, they like the mac rides here they've got four mac roller coasters and uh, yeah this is a mac as well this log flume um so yeah the canadian river i think it's called here's the entrance to it yeah these are the signs what i noticed there we go so it's closed between 12 and 1. Yeah, I didn't look at the uh, at the wild mouse coaster down that end. If that had one of those on, I just saw a big chain across. So I'm assuming now that's what it is, which I'm quite happy about if so, because it means that it's not down because of technical problems. It means I can get on it, um, which is good. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of them, how they're doing that. Um, just closing rides to cover breaks and things. I mean, it's not, not great. But here we go. Yeah, built by Mac Rides. Log flume, looks all right, this does. I think it's only got one drop from what I've seen, unless there's another one that's hidden somewhere. But it does look quite a short one. But still, it's a log flume, and it's got some nice theme in here in the middle. Let's go. So here we are on the log flume. Nice journey through the woodland here. It's got a very relaxed vibe, this park. I do like it feel like it'd have an even better atmosphere on a busier day here, but I think that's the same with quite a lot of parks, to be honest. 
Oh, I love how the track for the power coaster goes all over the trough here. Soon got the uh, trough filled up, didn't they? It was only less than 10 minutes ago I was on there and this looked like empty. Well, it was empty, crazy. Must be nice and easy to fill up. Here we are, climbing up that hill. It's very pretty. There's some very nice theming in this park. A lot of flowers and planting as well. And you might remember from back near the start of the vlog, just after I came in, uh, that lovely entrance with the horses at the side. I forgot to even talk about that. I was that excited by Alpina Blitz. Yeah, just straight into the big drop on this one. And here we go. Whee! Boom! Oh, not that wet. Hardly wet at all, actually. Oh, because I'm the only one in the boat. <laughs> there we go. Oh, they look so. It's what is the five of them in there? Nice ride, that. Short and sweet. One drop. Does what it says on the tin. In a nice area. This whole Canadian section of the park is definitely my favourite. Really like it. There we go. A bit of on-ride footage there from the log flume. I'm not on the March train, but I feel like I'm back at Disneyland on this. Absolutely love these Mississippi steamboats. Didn't have a clue this was here. I mean, I went on one at Park St. Paul and that was good, but this is like even better because it's gone upstairs. You can even buy food on here as well. There's a little bar area downstairs. How cool is that? Proper indoor seating area here as well. There we are on this wonderful sailing ship. Great, this is. It is like a mini March way. It's not quite the same size as it, but it's nice. Taking us on a journey around the Canadian waters. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? There's the park's gyro drop tower. I get a great view of it from here. Looking forward to giving that a go and seeing what it's like. Very well themed all around there as well. As we enjoy this journey round. We've got a bit of music playing now. Sounds like it's coming from downstairs, actually. Should we go and have a look? Now, I tell you what, even the Disney parks don't have animatronics on theirs. This is good. Quite a good quality as well. Natural movement. I mean, sometimes these animatronics, they're a bit like, doom, doom, doom. Whereas these, moving quite nice. They're really good. How relaxing. And like, so yeah, you can buy coffees and stuff over there as well. My popcorn as well. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm surprised they don't do that. The Disney park starts selling things on there, to be honest. A way of making some extra money, and it's nice. That is a nice part of the experience. I love that. Yeah, oh, this is a really nice steamship. Very impressed. Yeah, these run on a, a track underneath the water. I mean, you can't see it because it's all very well hidden, but yeah, they run around on a track. So they're very nicely designed. Oh, I love it. So I'll show you a bit more footage. I can hear a ride over there. I think that could be a Zampilla Disco at that end from looking at the map. But we might see it when we go further around.
You know me, I love rides like that. Nice and relaxing, you can just sit there and take in the views. And uh, that was really good. I especially like the animatronics on there. Uh, I thought they were really good quality. And the fact that as well, they've got a bar on there. Uh, how nice is that? Like, just have a bit of a snack as you're going around. Like, it's great. Anyway, up next, I'm going on the uh, Zamperla Disco just here. One of the first ones to open this, I believe. So let's go and have a ride. It's one of those that's got a camel back in the middle as well. Off we go then, on the Zamperla Disco. It's getting warm again now. Need to put my shorts back on, really, for the afternoon. We're in the car, though. I am enjoying all the music around this section of the park. All the country and western music. Woo! Oh, not that time. Next one. Oh no. Yeah. Woo! Hey, and we're over. Done a few of these this trip as well. Quite sad that it's coming to the end, the last part. Woo! What a good part to end on, though. Woo! Got to love a disco. There we go, slowing down. Showboat going past again. And we all quite enjoyed that. Not loads of theming on it, but I do like the music. A nice ride there on the park, Zamperla Disco. How pretty is this round here? Got the nice vintage cars. Reminds me of a little bit of Europa Park, this area around here. With all the planting and all in the trees. Just looks very beautiful. It's not particularly heavily themed. It's just nicely landscaped. And especially this, that looks very Europa with all the buildings, all the archways on it. But yes, I'm heading down this way for my next ride. It's here on the left hand side and it's the park's gyro drop tower that stands at 100 meters, built by Funtime and opened in 2016. So it's what, three years old? Yeah, I'm looking forward to giving this one a go. I think it's Dungeon Extreme, it translates to in English or Extreme Dungeon, maybe you'd say it that way around. I'm not too sure, but it's got some nice theme in. You can see it peeking through the trees around here to the left hand side. There it is. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this because you can see it from a long way away when I was driving to the park today. And so I think the view is going to be absolutely stunning. And I must say the theming's great around here. What I also really like with this is how they've got a kid's drop tower next to it. So obviously everybody can kind of be involved in the overall experience of this because um, you've got the huge gyro drop tower. I mean, this is huge, look at that. Crazy. Yeah, you've got that, and then of course you've got the little one just next to it. You can just see that popping out the top. And after I've been on this, I believe we've got a dark ride just here on the right-hand side that is apparently quite good. So I will check that out. But yes, let's go along for the ride. Dungeon Extreme. I thought that said uh, Drayton Manor up there then. It says Dragon Manor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm not back at Drayton Manor, am I? And there it is. So the catch car is attached, and we're starting this very long climb up to the top, where we should get a great view above the park and the surrounding area as well. When I was driving in, there's a lot of houses right outside the entrance. It's a bit like Alton Towers, how it's got the village of Alton right next to it. Very similar with this part. Oh, that's a stunning view already. The Mississippi boat. 
going around the river there. What a gorgeous area to build a theme park. Oh, really nice. The indoor coaster over there, Alpina Blitz, Ferris wheel. We've got the Gerslauer Skyfly down there. I believe that was the first ever one to be built, actually. Another Mack Rides boat ride down there at the bottom. Yeah, and there's the, the village right next to the park. <laughs> it's crazy. In fact, some of the restaurants and shops down there actually back onto the village. I assume that's all the maintenance area out the back there. Great view. So we spin round. Don't think we've got any tilting seats on this one. Hopefully it's a bit more forceful than Highlander. That hands apart when I was there the other week with Harry Turnstiles. Check out the vlog if you've not seen it. Oh, the good news is that final coaster credit I need is open as well. You can see that going down there. There's the view down. It's a long way down. <laughs> Hoping for some force. I really hope so because it's a cracking view. As we wait. <laughs> hey! Oh. Oh. There we go. It's definitely got a bit more kick to it than Highlander. Still not as good as the Interman Towers. Like I say, this is built by Fun Time. But yeah, it's got more kick to it than Highlander. All the views were spectacular from up the top there. And like I say, it had quite a bit of force, that one. Uh, certainly more than Highlander. Uh, I wish that had the tilting seats on there because obviously that made Highlander uh, really good there, Hansa Park. Uh, but yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because this is more forceful. However, it doesn't have the tilting seats. So I don't know, they're two very different rides, even though they're the same manufacturer. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed that. Actually, I'll have another couple of goes on there later. And uh, yeah, up next, I'm off to try a dark ride that all people have said to me on social media today is, Sean, don't miss this. It's got animatronics that are quite good and quite nicely put together. And I like the facade, look at this. You know me and my dark rides, I enjoy them a lot. And yeah, this looks very nice. Some sound effects from the side, it's a good start. Photo opportunity. In terms of the park, it is all very nicely looked after here. Looks very fresh. And here we go. Ooh, 1807, is that? Another photo off. Oh, it's quite eerie. Oh, wow. Nice key line down here. The big wall in the middle. It's quite scary down here on your own. <laughs> Very spooky soundtrack. Let's see what this has in store for us. system itself. Very eerie so far.
Oh, I absolutely love that. So well put together. Really enjoyed that. I love going in there not knowing anything about it. And what a really unique ride system as well. Al. We went into like, the attic scene and it spun round. Like that was really cool. Uh, so there's some great stuff in there. The flying chair was my favourite in there. Uh, I thought that was really well put together actually. And I'd say the quality of some of the animatronics was really good. There was a couple in there that looked a bit naff. Uh, but yeah, in general, that was a good dark ride that was. Some great scenes. Uh, you know, not the longest of dark rides out there. What, maybe three minutes or something? Um, but as long as it's got the details in there, it's a winner for me. Uh, it doesn't matter how long it is. Uh, so yeah, that was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. In fact, whilst I'm here and it's walk on, I think I may as well go and have another go. Uh, and then after that, we'll continue around the rest of the park, go and get that one final coaster credit I need to get and try out a few of the other rides as well. I must say, I do really like all the theming around this one. And I believe it was the prototype that opened in 2012. See, it's quite old. Let's see how this rides. Let's see if I can get it spinning more, most importantly. Didn't really see much spinning action going on just when I was watching it. it feels a little bit different to operate this one than the others. It's like the, the wings don't seem to, to go as much. Oh my God, I can't even get it swaying. Oh, that's it. Oh, nearly. Here we go, come on. That's it, I've got it. Oh, I lost it again. At least I got it going. Better than I did the other day at Trip Thrill. Oi, yeah. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, it certainly feels a bit different, that one, but at least I got it going. Got a few flips. Well, I'm glad that I managed to get it going anyway. I'm not the expert on those. Sky Force at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I can get going quite well if the wind conditions are right. Um, but yeah, that one felt very different in terms of how the handles were. And I don't think the wings uh, were as big as the other ones. So maybe with that being the original, as they've built more, they've made the wings a bit bigger to try and get them spinning faster. I'm not too sure. And it's on a postcard. Or just down below in the comments will do. This is a nice area of the park. Look at this. This is right up my street. You got a little monorail there running above you. All these buildings. You can definitely tell they're going down the themed routes here. Uh, with future additions, much like most parks are in, in mainland Europe. It's really good to see that theme is really improving. Oh, this is interesting, these little booths that you can sit in. I tell you what, it's really warm again now, I'm sweating. I've got my jeans on. <laughs> it looked like it was getting truck it down this morning. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? But yeah, I'm going over to uh, Jurassic Park River Adventure now. <laughs> no, it's Dinosaur's Adventure. But here we go. I'm sure earlier on when I was walking past this, I heard the Jurassic Park soundtrack playing. <laughs> well, unless I was imagining it. Welcome to Jurassic Park. So here we are inside this walkthrough. And yeah, it is the actual Jurassic Park soundtrack that's playing, not like a remake of it, <laughs> which is interesting. I suppose as long as you've got the correct license, you are allowed to use like different movie soundtracks and things. Uh, however, we have seen parks recently that have been using soundtracks that have been produced just for them at other parks, such as Wallagator, they were playing the Smiler soundtrack. 
which wasn't good. And uh, yeah, I mean, I do prefer it when parks have their own soundtracks. Um, I don't think it's quite as bad when they're using music from movies. However, uh, I do much prefer it when it's a nice customized soundtrack. So yeah, nice walkthrough. I was kind of hoping for a boat ride or something. That would have made this, I think, going around the boat ride. But yeah, it's, it's okay. Reasonable animatronics, I'd say. Remind me a little bit of the ones in Lost Kingdom at Poulton's Park. Got this huge area. Good old dinosaurs. Charlotte would love this. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I've missed her so much. We're spending a good few days together, uh, obviously before the America trip uh, that me and Alex are going on. And then, uh, yeah, we've got loads planned over summer, me and Charlotte. We're doing a week trip to the Netherlands. And then, of course, a few weeks after that, we're going out to Florida for two weeks. And um, so, yeah, we've got lots and lots going on. This reminds me of at a first look, the snails at Joyland in Great Yarmouth back in the UK. Like a more controlled version of it. Just with the, like the little camel humps and stuff like it's got. Gotta go on this, it looks like it goes indoors so it might have a little dark ride scene. I don't know, let's find out. It's got a walk on queue. It's got plenty of ride vehicles as well. Gotta do this and then I'll go on that other coaster. Do a few re-rides then I think. Not much more for me to see here in terms of new stuff. So let's go on. carrot down there mate you like that no you're not enjoying that carrot no now I'm hoping for a huge indoor dark ride scene here because it looks like it goes all the way back through the building so I'm hoping so we'll soon find out it is definitely more like a control version of the snails at Joyland it's a good start. This could be one of those epic theme park worldwide fail moments, but there's been quite a few of those over the years. It's going indoors down the end. Oh, or is it just going, oh, it's just going back round, is it? Oh, there you go. It is one of them epic theme park worldwide fail moments then. I thought it was going through here and then like went in behind this building. Oh no, it's just this section out the front. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> there you go, just I was talking about it, one of them moments. Nice little ride for the kids, isn't it? I just thought there was going to be a, a bit of a dark ride scene there. I say that, it has got some goats though, Go Park Worldwide. And I think there's some real ones around here. This, that's been what, four parks with goats on this trip. Honestly, when I get back, Charlotte's going to kill me tomorrow. <laughs> right, let's go and ride this Mac Wild Mouse.
must say the Schlitt Express was very good. It had ridiculously smooth brakes on there. The block sections were really nice when you passed over them. It's quite soothing. I know it sounds very strange, but normally that used to get bashed about on those. But yeah, look at these little goats down here. Nice and chill. They got some cow sound effects from down here though, which is a bit strange. <laughs> Wonder what the goats actually think of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a bit weird, isn't it? I can't even find the speaker. Must be around here somewhere. Uh, yeah, these <laughs> goats don't make that noise. <laughs> oh, that's why the speaker's over here. That's why. Because there's some model cows. But yeah, there we go. I'm getting on this Ferris wheel now. And then after that, I'm going to do a few re-rides. I want to have another couple of goes on the uh, indoor coaster because I loved that. Of course, Alpina Blitz, another few rides on that. Uh, I'd like to do the train. Uh, I'm not too sure where the station is, but I'll find it. Yeah, let's go for a little uh, ride on here. Not too sure exactly where the entrance is. Oh, just up the middle here, is it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's, oh, that's a ramp up for disabled access. There we go. Should we get some nice views from this one? Oh, look at that view of Alpina Blitz. Yeah, oh, that's what I came out here for. Well, look at that. Gorgeous coaster. They certainly got the money's worth there with eight million. Always having the grass cut down there as well, look. Making it nice and fresh. Oh, it's a lovely park. It's got a really nice vibe. Uh, I'd love to see it on a busy day here. Uh, I think it'd give it even more atmosphere in some of the areas. It reminds me of Europa Park when it's a quiet day. Um, some of the areas just lack a bit of atmosphere, whereas you know, it's the same in a lot of parks, isn't it? But yeah, I, I quite actually like visiting parks when they're busy. I know some people might say, Sean, that's a bit stupid, but I quite like it. As long as I can get everything done, it's just nice when it's a, a good crowd, if that makes sense. There we are, there's the car park over there. So yeah, it gives you an idea. See what I mean about the setup? Like massive car park, then you walk all the way down the side of the park to get to the entrance. So yeah, it's very nice. I believe it's free parking as well, I think so. No barriers or anything, and I've not seen any signs, which is good. But they are some nice views. I'm gonna take a couple of photos up here as well and put them on Instagram. I've plugged it a lot throughout this trip, but if you haven't already, make sure you give us a follow on Instagram at Theme Park Worldwide and at Sean Sandbrook. My two different Instagram accounts. Oh, look at that. Wow. Ready for the intensity? Whoa, oh, brilliant coaster. Really, really nice family ride. I say family, and it's quite intense to be fair. Need to do some more re-rides on that. Yeah, make sure you give us a follow and links are down below in the video description to all of our social media. another awesome ride then on Alpina Blitz and also the indoor coaster as well it's brilliant really enjoy both of those rides here at this park just thought I'd show you all this in here you can see all the workings for the ride it's a jukebox from Liseberg in Sweden <laughs> there we are yeah these areas of the park are really nice I mean they're not ridiculously detailed however there's some very nice facades and you can certainly tell that uh, the theming's improved here with newer attractions uh, what they've put in yeah, this is very nice. I mean, look at the pizza uh, restaurant down there. Like, that facade is lovely. You know me and all my theme in and facades and stuff. I think it's really important. But this part's got a very nice vibe to it. There we are. It says bowling on there. Should you have a quick look inside? I think it looks like some sort of diner or something. Oh, oh, we got a, a Dodgems in here. Oh, wow, an old school Dodgems. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, wow. Looks like it's quite old and got a bit of history to it. All the lights. Notice there's a carousel that looks similar as well down near the entrance. And look at them seats over there. Oh, they're really cool. Dodgem's car hanging up from the ceiling over there. Motorbike. 
Oh, it's really nice. I assume they used to have bowling in here then. Then they put this ride in here maybe instead. Awesome. Right, I'm going to go and find the uh, railway now. Jump on the train and let's have a loop round on that. So whilst I was walking to try and find a train station, I bumped into another little boat ride here uh, called the African Cruise. So yeah, let's go for a little ride on here, shall we, and see what uh, this is like. Then this is another Mack ride, actually. Get used to that at this park. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Bit of trimming needed there. I tell you what, it's absolutely roasting. It's my third bottle of water I've had today. And there is the Africa Cruise. It's themed a bit like Jungle Cruise, this. Also worth pointing out, the staff at this park are all in themed uniforms. I like that. Let's go on. I don't mean to panic you all, viewers. But there's some alligators on the prowl. And they're close to the boat. Oh no! It's all right, I think there's only one. Oh, oh, maybe not. Hiding out there in the bushes. This is quite a nice ride. It'd have been great if I missed this. Nice view of the balloon ride there. There's a few different flat rides here as well. I'm not gonna go on them all though because I've not really got the time to be honest. I mean, it's just gone four o'clock. The park shuts in 90 minutes. Certainly a full day park and that's on a quiet day. Yes, I've done a few re-rides on some of my favourites, but definitely a full day needed here at Negroland. I'm getting quite emotional at the end of this trip. And I know we've got this huge USA trip coming up, but I've just really, really enjoyed myself this trip. And uh, I know you've not seen it, but off camera, I've met up with some lovely people like, in the evenings at these different parks. And uh, it's been wonderful. It really has, especially at Disneyland Paris and Europa Park, meeting up with friends of mine and having a few drinks. It's just been really, really nice. A wonderful trip and I'm more than ready and prepared for this huge USA road trip I really am talking to the USA this is inspired quite a bit by Jungle Cruise isn't it this is like uh, Schweizer Falls or this as they call it the backside of water <laughs> that elephant's trying to squirt me stay away you I've got a 250 mile drive back to the Euro Tunnel <laughs> It's a really good boat ride actually. I think the quality of the animatronics is quite good to be honest. Like them lions back there, they were good. The giraffe here. Quite realistic movement, like I say. The animatronics in this park I think are quite good. Very impressed. The zebras over there. Them ones are alright. The other one down there wasn't, was he? Poor thing. Yeah, I genuinely think they're quite nice out there moving. Flamingos over here. Quite a long ride this as well. It's been about 10 minutes. I think just goes around this corner now and then the station's back behind that bush. I think so. But yeah, really nice. Make sure you come on this if you visit the park. I like these boat rides and stuff, especially when they're done well. I mean, this has got some nice animatronics and some very nice planting all around it as well. It is like a, a tracked version, if you like, of, of, of Jungle Cruise without the, the skipper actually being on board. So obviously I know Jungle Cruise runs on a uh, on a track, but obviously you have your skipper on there who pretends to steer the boat, whereas on this one, it's just all automated. So yeah, I quite, quite like it, it's nice. A nice relaxing ride there on the African Cruise. Some very nice theming around that, I enjoyed it. This park has got some beautiful areas, it really has. And look at this carousel down here. Uh, I mentioned it earlier on when we saw them indoor dodgems, uh, that there was a carousel with loads of pretty lights around it and a cover on. Oh, look at this. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. All the lights all twinkling around the side. And this looks absolutely spectacular. It's one of the nicest carousels I've ever seen that. It's all the building all around it. Absolutely wonderful. The owners of this park 
uh, actually a traveling showman or I know they used to be um, so however that's how they sort of got into it all and that's why there's probably a lot of this history all around here I'd imagine maybe some of the rides that the family have had oh look at this over here we've got a model down here oh wow history I love it all this heritage oh loads of model rides oh these are brilliant look at that I wonder if this relates to the family that own the park or or not I'm not too sure I'll have to find all this out like I'm actually meeting the the owner like, this afternoon before I head off wow different model rides yeah this is gorgeous in here fantastic and then you got this wagon here as well a bit like the Mack family really I mean they started off as, as showmen and building all these different wagons and things brilliant yeah I really like it back there anyway right next to the train station now so just gonna wait for it to come in stations just here back near the entrance to the park beautiful that the train ride and it's great how it goes through the park and when I say that I mean it doesn't go around the perimeter and that's my one bug with the Disneyland Railroad how it just goes around the berm at the outside whereas what's great about this one Europa Park and quite a few other parks I've done recently actually and the railways actually go through the park which means you get some very nice views it's been absolutely wonderful but it's coming towards the end of the day. I've got time for a couple more re-rides on Alpina. And then that'll be it. The end of this huge York road trip. Can't believe it's come to an end, but it's been absolutely wonderful. It's been a pleasure bringing it to you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. Bring it on. Me and Charlotte have got our Netherlands trip coming up. A couple of parts in Belgium as well. So yeah, it's going to be really good. Coming up in July, end of July, that one after the big US trip with Alex, of course. What an absolutely wonderful day here at Nigoland. But what I'll do, I'll share a little bit of off-ride footage this time from Alpina Blitz. So not really put much of that in. And then we'll uh, head back to the car, wrap up this vlog, and wrap up this trip through Belgium, France, and Germany. It's been absolutely wonderful. So along with just having four back-to-back -back rides on Alpina Blitz, I also got to meet the director of the park, uh, Rudolf, who was a very friendly guy to meet. Um, so a big thank you for having me here at the park today. I really appreciate everything, including the fantastic behind-the-scenes tour uh, that I just had in the maintenance shed. Uh, here we go for uh, Alpina Blitz. So yeah, it's a great photo of that, isn't it, of me there uh, next to the red train. Uh, after that, the red train was actually put on the track, and I managed to have a go on that a couple of times. And actually, the red train felt like it was running even 
faster than the blue train. In terms of this park, I've really enjoyed it today. It's been what I was expecting, to be honest, in terms of the areas. The only thing that I'd sort of say is different is the size of it. It's a lot bigger than what I thought it was actually going to be. And there's a couple of bits that I've not managed to do here today. Uh, smaller things, but like I would have done the monorail, the vintage cars, that sort of thing, for example. Uh, but I've just not physically had the time to get it all in. Um, but yeah, there's three standout rides for me here at this park. Alpina Blitz, the Matt Mega Coaster. Uh, that's really good fun. Exactly what I was expecting, that one. Um, brilliant airtime and, and very intense. In terms of other rides at the park, the standouts for me uh, was the indoor roller coaster from Mac. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I thought that was fantastic with all the uh, effects and soundtrack and everything in there. That was really good. Uh, and also, uh, I really enjoyed the ghost train that I went on. That was very good. I'd not heard much about it. And it was a nice sort of surprise, really, to be able to do it. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's a nice park. It's very consistent. It's not particularly heavily themed in some areas. Uh, however, it's well landscaped throughout. The staff are friendly throughout. Uh, I like parts that are consistent. Uh, the Canadian area is probably my favourite. Uh, enjoyed all that over there by the powered coaster and the log flume. Enjoyed going on that Mississippi boat. Uh, there's some great stuff in this park and there's a lot here. Like I say, they have got a small pirate themed hotel as well. Uh, and yeah, it's great. I'd really recommend it. There's nothing much else around it in terms of other major parts to come and see, to be honest. There's some smaller bits, but uh, it's a bit out of the way. Uh, however, it's well worth coming to. And if you're doing a trip out here, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But talking of trips, that is it, the end of this epic road trip across Europe with numerous different vlogs, so many different videos from some major parks like Disneyland Paris and Europa Park to first visits like here today, Walligator, Balwadi, Park St. Paul. Honestly, there's been so much and it's been absolutely wonderful to share my adventure uh, with you all. It's been great and it's been a massive sort of build up ready for the biggest USA trip uh, ever on Theme Park Worldwide after this biggest Europe trip. It's been great, I've met so many wonderful people on the way both staff and friends i've met new friends honestly it's been great it really has and after the parts have closed i've really had a lot of time to spend with uh, people and, and enjoy that it, it, honestly it's been absolutely wonderful uh, there's been so much more to this trip off camera that you've not seen uh, that's been absolutely amazing as well so i just want to say a big thank you because because of all you guys watching these videos i get this wonderful opportunity to come out here and visit all these theme parks across the world and i really am so so grateful and i appreciate each and every one of you watching this right now for your support to theme park worldwide and it's amazing to think that we are approaching 200,000 subscribers that's the next big milestone for this channel uh, we hit 180,000 recently honestly it is crazy so thank you so so much from the bottom of my heart it means the world to me it really does and this channel is my life and I put everything into it and it's great to see that you guys enjoy following it it really is thank you so much for watching this series check out the play List. go back watch all the other ones if you've not seen them and of course comment on this video with your favorite vlog and favorite park uh, that i've done out of this whole road trip i would love to know uh, your thoughts there'll be a lot more stuff like this coming in the future these road trips are great to do the cheap to do and it's a good way of seeing more parks i'm sean sandbrook this has been an absolutely epic road trip across europe and that means it's time to cue those credits